Have you ever wanted to find a praying mantis in your yard? These animals make really awesome encounters while you're out exploring, and I know firsthand that they can be really hard to find. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you my best tips to finding a praying mantis in your backyard. Today we're looking for one of my all-time favorite insects, the praying mantis. I've been getting requests for this video for a long time, and today I'm going to be walking you through how I find praying mantises in my backyard. Let's go. As they sit and wait for prey, praying mantises are elegant ambush predators. With their uncanny camouflage in the leafy environments they call home, it takes a careful eye to spot one of these animals against their background. These insects are popular among insect keepers and wilderness explorers alike. With their slow, calculated movements, you can almost feel how smart these animals are and anyone who's sat there and watched one of these animals for an extended period of time knows that their behavior can be transfixing. I've been receiving requests to make this video for some time. So today, my goal is to get up close and personal with both of the common species we have here in Central North Carolina and show you how to find a praying mantis in your own backyard. For me, a praying mantis hunt starts in the late fall and even into winter. That's because here in the US, a lot of bushes, trees, and vascular weeds will lose their leaves and dry up for the winter. That means it's a lot easier to spot things like this. This is a praying mantis egg case or oatheca, and these are really, really easy to spot in the winter. The reason it's important to be able to spot one of these is because Knowing where an egg sac is means you'll know where the nymphs are gonna hatch in the spring. I don't recommend you bring one of these inside because in the warm house during the winter months, it's bound to hatch, but the thing is you're not gonna have any food to feed the babies and they're all gonna die. A lot easier to leave these outside in your backyard or local park and keep in mind where you saw it so you can look again later in the springtime. You may not always be able to find an egg sac in your backyard especially if you had trouble finding praying mantises in the past. So now we'll move on to the second way that I find praying mantises in my backyard, which I think is more fun. When hunting any kind of animal, the easiest way to figure out where you might be able to find it is by reverse engineering the kind of habitat they live in or the things that they eat. Praying mantises are diurnal, opportunistic ambush predators. This means if the sun's out, you can bet they're going to be active, and they'll eat pretty much anything small enough that they can overpower with their front claws. This may seem difficult to pinpoint a location where you can find them, but let's think about this. The praying mantis's diet is mostly insects. While larger species might be able to take down a lizard, frogs, or even some small birds, they're generally going to focus on insects. So what we want to look for are tall vascular plants that can support the praying mantis's weight and give it a place to camouflage on and watch for potential prey items to zip by. Ideal locations are gonna be high traffic with flying insects and other kinds of invertebrate activity. For me, my go-to spot is this large brush of fennel stalks growing next to the creek. In your backyard, it's likely gonna be a garden or any kind of overgrown patch of weeds. The plant diversity will attract a large amount of insects, which will in turn attract insect predators like the praying mantis. Here in central North Carolina, we have two species of praying mantis that are particularly common, the Carolina mantis and the Chinese mantis. This is a Carolina mantis nymph. And while it's too early in the year to catch adult Carolina mantises, I wanna highlight this species for a very important reason. In some states, this species as well as other native species, are protected under law, and you can receive a hefty fine if you're caught capturing or keeping one of these animals. I wanted to highlight this because it's very important that you check the laws on these things in your particular state before going out to try and handle any praying mantises. This way, you keep out of trouble, and I avoid getting nasty emails. The Carolina mantis is our native species here in North Carolina, and in my opinion, the patterns that you get on these guys are way cooler than that of the Chinese. Having evolved in this environment for a long period of time, the modeling and colors that the Carolina Mantis exhibits 
are much more well suited for camouflaging in this environment. It's not to say the Chinese mantis can't camouflage, but it's definitely more challenging to spot one of these guys than their introduced cousin. Due to their elusive nature and incredible camouflage, praying mantises can be really hard to find. Since moving to rural North Carolina, the populations of these guys are absolutely huge, and I've learned quite a little bit about how to find these guys in their natural environment. Here we go. This is what we're looking for. This right here is a nice sized adult Chinese praying mantis. Looks like a male. Let's see if I can coax him on my hand. I gotta be careful though, because these guys do fly. Hey buddy, you're okay. You're all right. There he is. That right there is a nice sized praying mantis. Let's get him close for the camera and I'll show you a little bit about these amazing little creatures. Now this is an adult Chinese praying mantis. These guys are introduced, meaning they're not native, but they're not causing a significant enough impact on the ecosystem to be considered invasive. I've covered these guys in the past and actually previously filmed a female. You'll notice the females are significantly larger than this individual, and instead of a blotchy coloration, they tend to have a solid color. Now the males, while they still have that distinctive, those stripes along the wings on the side, they are significantly smaller than the females. And you'll notice the coloration is totally different too. The females are gonna be a totally solid green with these like neon green stripes, or they're gonna be a grayish brown. This is one of the two male kinds you can find where they get like a greenish brownish color, almost like a dying piece of grass. I honestly think that with this species, the females are quite a bit prettier than the males in terms of coloration. But these guys are also gonna have a lot longer antenna and a significantly smaller body. That's how you can usually tell the males. Now this guy's being really cooperative. He's not like taken off or anything, but these guys can really, really fly. Their wings are fully functional, unlike those of the females. That's a really big, big tell. If you find a praying mantis like this in your yard and it's able to fly, it's likely a male. And right now he's looking like he might jump and fly. That or, I don't know, we'll see. There he goes. Finding a praying mantis is always a welcome encounter. Where do you find praying mantises in your backyard? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this backyard adventure, check out the link on your screen. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.